No suspect and no motive after the deadly double bombing of the Boston Marathon. We will find out who did this and we will hold them accountable. The Boston bombing sends new shutters through already jittery world markets. A timely warning from Australia's new counter-terrorism ambassador. We and any other uh, country is, uh, with a Western, uh, Western ideology is going to be a target. And a senior state minister pays a high price for leaking information to a journalist. I need to formally and publicly apologise to this House and to all members for my lack of discretion. Good evening, Ian Henderson with ABC News. There's a new international terror alert tonight after two explosions tore through a crowd at the Boston Marathon today, killing at least three people. More than a hundred others were injured, many of them seriously. And there are reports tonight that one of the dead is an eight-year-old boy. Our coverage begins in Boston with the ABC's Ben Knight. One White House official has already called this an act of terrorism. Just a few hundred metres behind me is the finish line of the Boston Marathon and that's where the two explosions detonated in quick succession. Several people have been confirmed killed, more than a hundred have been injured. 28,000 runners were here from 90 countries around the world, including Australia, and authorities have been working through the night to try to work out what happened and who was responsible. 42 kilometres down, and just a few metres to go. But with the finish line in sight, suddenly, triumph turns to tragedy. Just moments later, a second blast. Dozens suffered horrific injuries. Just white smoke all in the air. It was horrible. We saw the first bomb go off. People, sorry, blow up in the streets. Some of the injured are described as being in an absolutely critical condition. Within moments of the explosions, Boston police put the city in lockdown. Guys, guys, guys! No way! No way! Go back! No way. There are federal, state, and local law enforcement all on scene and coordinating very closely. The FBI has taken charge of the investigation. President Obama was quick to respond, promising that those responsible will feel the full weight of justice. But he stopped short of describing the blasts as an act of terrorism. We still do not know who did this or why. And people shouldn't jump to conclusions before we have all the facts. But make no mistake, we will get to the bottom of this. Around 150 Australians competed in the marathon, but the Department of Foreign Affairs says it appears none of them were hurt. I heard a couple of loud bangs, and they were pretty loud, but I was a fair way away. Um, and one of my other runners, he got into the bar, and he just told me that it just, it just sounded like they dropped one of those huge skips from a 10-storey building. So far, no group has claimed responsibility. And with the hunt for the perpetrators underway, America is, once again, on high alert. And we got in touch with Ben Knight in Boston a short time ago for an update on the investigation into the bombing. Well, in some hours ago, there was a large swarm of police and FBI and other officers that raided an apartment that was in the town of Revere, which is just outside the, uh, the city of Boston here. Now, police will only say that what happened there was that they served a warrant, but that it is related to the investigation. Now, the Boston Crime Seat Unit were there. They entered the property and they came out with a number of brown paper bags, which presumably contain some sort of evidence. Now, there have also been reports about the devices themselves, that they were loaded with ball bearings and other shrapnel, obviously, to, to maximise the damage. And there are two other devices that were found. They, however, were safely detonated. And Ben, have authorities in Boston given us any more information about the victims of the attack? 
Well, yes, some is, is starting to come through. An eight-year-old boy is among the dead. That's obviously very distressing, but also reports that his mother and his sister are also among the wounded while they were standing there waiting for the, the father of the family to, uh, to finish the race. Look, a number of the victims, a significant number of the victims have had to have amputations, and that relates to the, the type of explosive that was used. Doctors are also saying that they're going to need extra operations in the coming days. Tonight, armed and dangerous. One Boston terror suspect on the run as police confirm another man they killed was one of the bombers. Good evening, welcome to Late Line. I'm Emma Alberici. It's been a day of tense negotiations in Canberra as state and territory premiers and chief ministers met with Julia Gillard with education reform at the top of the agenda. Queensland and Western Australia continue to reject the Prime Minister's funding proposals, but the Queensland Premier Campbell Newman denies that his reluctance to sign up to Gonski or the National Disability Insurance Scheme has anything at all to do with political point scoring. He says it's quite the contrary. I put this to you. It's very clear, and any, any insider, any of the inside the Beltway people will tell you that Julie Gillard throughout the whole of last year had a policy, and her, her people used to skite about it, that they were going to, in the federal election campaign, um, actually go after Queensland, go after my government and me personally, um, and uh, that, that has been an ongoing political strategy. That interview with Campbell Newman is coming up shortly and you can join the conversation with guest tweeter Andrew Crook, senior journalist at Crikey. Just follow the Late Line hashtag. First, our other headlines. Rolf Harris, named as the Australian entertainer arrested in Britain over sex abuse claims. Tony Abbott shifts his position on gay marriage after two Liberal premiers call for a conscience vote. And arrested for treason. Former Pakistani President Perez Musharraf is taken into custody. One of the suspects wanted for the Boston Marathon bombings has been shot dead and a massive manhunt is now underway for a second man identified by the FBI. A force of 10,000 heavily armed police officers is now searching buildings and streets in Watertown near Boston. The city is in lockdown and authorities have told residents in surrounding suburbs not to leave their homes. It's the culmination of a dramatic night involving a car chase and shootout with police. The ABC's North America correspondent Correspondent Lisa Miller is in Boston. Lisa, tell us, can you describe the nature of this manhunt that's currently underway? Well, to say that Boston is in lockdown, Emma, is not to overstate the uh, circumstances. In fact, the police just held another They are now telling all of Boston's residents to stay indoors. That's four and a half million people we're talking about as this manhunt gets underway. The area where we've been overnight in Watertown, uh, they've been making 911 reverse calls to uh, residents, emergency operators sending out robot messages telling people to stay indoors as the police were going uh, house to house to try and uh, locate these suspects. So it all seemed to happen quite quickly. The FBI released images of the suspects and no sooner had they done that than we heard about the, uh, the, the killing of this suspect and the, the chase for the second man. How did things move so fast? Well, it was in less than a 12-hour period, Emma. The first thing that we knew about was the attempted robbery of a 7-Eleven store, and one of the bombing suspects was caught on the video camera there. Uh, that was at around 10 p.m. last night. They then, uh, the allegation is that they then were responsible for the death of a police officer at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, a college here, uh, that it was a college police officer. And then as police went to uh, to investigate that crime, they, they allegedly ca <clears throat> carjacked uh, a Mercedes and then led police on a wild 
uh, chase through the streets of Boston and it ended up at Watertown where one of the suspects, uh, well, they all, they both got involved in a firefight with uh, police, a gunfight with police, and there was uh, reportedly explosives used as well, and uh, one of them was shot and injured. We then learned later that he uh, was dead. The police have confirmed that these two men are the men they believe responsible for the bombing uh, in on Monday at the marathon, and uh, that is why they are now saying it is a grave situation Situation. It is very serious. They can't, uh, they can't make it more serious for people in Boston now that they've even extended this lockdown area. They've shut down the transport. Emma, by the way, no buses, and I've just learnt that even taxis are being told to stay off the road in this city. What can you tell us, Lisa, about these suspects? Nothing has been released officially, but certainly uh, some reputable wire services that we look to as uh, uh, requiring quite a few sources before they report have suggested that they are brothers, that they are from uh, the Russian region, uh, Chechnya, that they're 19, the youngest one is the one that is still on the run, the older brother was the one who was injured and, and then died in that gunfight. But we're not learning much more than that, uh, no suggestion yet about uh, what was behind their plot. If it is absolutely confirmed, they are the ones who were involved in the bombing on Monday. But uh, most people are reporting that it is uh, that they are brothers and the younger one is the one that uh, the younger one seen in those photos with the white cap on is the one that police are so desperate to find. So tell us now that th that we we know at least the who of this mystery if not the why what's the mood like there incredibly tense. In fact, I am in downtown Boston, just a couple of blocks from where the uh, bombing occurred, and this would normally be an, a very busy business uh, day. It would be like the middle of Sydney. Well, you can see behind me there's not a great deal of traffic moving, there's not a lot of people around, so they are uh, taking the advice of the police to stay indoors. That's in Boston itself, but across the country there's been a growing anxiety after this attack because it, things have been calmer. There's been less concern about uh, terror attacks than at any other time that I can remember since September 11. And uh, people were perhaps believing that they, uh, that the, the government had told them that they were able to uh, tackle any threats that were upon us or that they'd worked out what issues were out there and uh, this, this uh, attack on what's regarded as a soft target, the Boston Marathon, uh, has just raised those anxieties. Lisa Miller there in Boston, thanks so much for that update. Suspect in custody. Boston celebrates after police capture a teenager wanted over the marathon bombing. New claims in the AFL supplements row have the Premier insisting on a rigorous inquiry. These are extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary allegations that need to be thoroughly and properly investigated. Jobs pitch. The state opposition vows to stop white collar work going overseas. Up to one million jobs could be moved offshore in the next three decades. And off the track, but still the favourite. Black Caviar's fond farewell. Whether she knows this is the last time, I don't know that, but she knows how to play it up. Good evening, Tamara O'Dine with ABC News. A suspect in the Boston Marathon bombings is in custody tonight after an extraordinary 24-hour manhunt. Police found the teenager hiding in a boat in the backyard of a suburban home. His elder brother and alleged accomplice was killed during a shootout with police. North America correspondent Lisa Miller is in Boston. 19-year-old Jahar Zanayev is in a critical condition in the hospital behind me. He's got gunshot wounds to his neck and his leg. He'd evaded police for the entire day, during which Boston was brought to a virtual standstill. 
The dramatic final moments of the manhunt for an alleged terrorist who, along with his brother, had paralysed a city. Bomb squads and SWAT teams move in and helicopters circle overhead. Shots fired. Jahar Zanayev exchanges fire from his hideout in a boat in a water town backyard. As the sun goes down, more explosions. There are two more, two more banks right there. 90 minutes after first being discovered by a local resident hiding in his boat, the final humbling moment. Jahar Zanayev was in custody. And Mark, I just heard from a, a very trustworthy state police source who tells me shots fired and the suspect is down. That suspect is now in custody. We're exhausted, folks, but we have a, a victory here tonight. It's a night where I think we're all going to rest easy. It had been a dramatic hunt that began with the shooting death of a campus police officer. Police say the younger suspect fled on foot after his brother died in a gunfight the night before. He eluded police as they went house to house, searching for a man they described as armed and dangerous. The city was paralysed, public transport shut down, universities and businesses closed, with a warning for people to stay indoors. After a fruitless search, police announced they were pulling out. He'd slipped their net. But two hours later, he was in their hands, cause for celebration. It's unbelievable. I just can't help but get in it, you know? This manhunt has been one of the most intense that America has seen, but his capture is only the beginning of trying to answer the questions that remain. What motivated the suspects to carry out those attacks? The president says that will be determined, but in the end, Americans won out. One thing we do know is that whatever hateful agenda drove these men to such heinous acts will not, cannot prevail. Whatever they thought they could ultimately achieve, they've already failed. But the past week is one that Boston will never forget. Lisa Miller, ABC News, Boston. The brothers at the heart of the manhunt were ethnic Chechens who'd lived in America for a decade after moving here from the Russian province of Dagestan. Moscow correspondent Norman Hermont has the latest on what we know about the two men. They seemingly had all the ingredients to build a successful immigrant life in America after their family fled the brutal civil war between Islamic militants and Russian forces in Chechnya, the brothers eventually claimed asylum in the U.S. Their father, who now lives in the turbulent Russian Republic of Dagestan, refuses to accept his sons are the Boston bombers. Somebody clearly framed them. I don't know who exactly framed them, but they did. They framed them. And they were so cowardly that they shot the boy dead. An aunt, now living in Canada, shared a similar sentiment. If somebody wants to convince me, show me evidence. I'm going back to this again. Show me evidence. But evidence. Do you think the FBI would... Investigators will have to determine the motive for their alleged involvement. Jokar Sarnayev posted online about Islam and support for Chechen independence, but there was little pointing to radical fundamentalism. Older brother Tamerlan was more disaffected. In a photo essay about his boxing career, there is this quote, I don't have a single American friend. I don't understand them. The FBI says it questioned Tamerlan in 2011 at the request of the Russian government about possible links to Chechen extremists. The agency says it found no incriminating evidence. Chechnya's president says if the brothers are the bombers, there's no link to his republic in the Russian North Caucasus. According to American media reports, they lived, studied and grew up in America. Therefore, it's to blame for such an upbringing, not us. Islamic militants from the North Caucasus have launched numerous attacks against Russia, including two deadly strikes on Moscow in the last three years. But there's almost no precedent and seemingly little motive for a strike outside of Russia. If there is indeed a link between the two bombers and militant groups based in the North Caucasus, this would indeed be the first time that we've seen uh, jihadist groups based in, in that region exporting uh, acts of terrorism to the American soil. Investigators will be hoping Jokar Zarnayev can provide some answers, starting with why a man described by many as a promising young student allegedly embarked on a rampage that terrorized Boston and frightened a nation. Norman Hermont, ABC News, Moscow. 
One of the brothers may have been a follower of a controversial Australian Muslim cleric. A YouTube account in the name of the older brother features religious videos, including one from Sydney-born Sheikh Faiz Muhammad. The account in the name of Tamilan Zanayev was created in August last year. The site hosts a range of fundamentalist Muslim messages. Among the clips are teachings of a Muslim preacher born and raised in Western Sydney. In one of them, Sheikh Fayez Muhammad denounces the popular children's book series Harry Potter. Harmless? This film, whatever you think about it, glorifies, magnifies, promotes paganism. Sheikh Fayez Muhammad is one of Australia's most controversial Muslims. But he's scared to go to jihad. What are you living for? As former head of the Global Islamic Youth Centre in Western Sydney, the firebrand preacher is known for his so-called death series of sermons on DVD. In them, he calls Jewish people pigs and encourages Muslim children to become martyrs. We want to have children and offer them as soldiers defending Islam, who in their soft, tender heart, the zeal of jihad and the love of martyrdom. Representatives from the Australian Muslim community are urging the Sheikh to denounce the bombings. This link is of concern to us and I certainly hope that the person uh, to whom they've been linked will come out and make a statement condemning the violence. Muggles! The ABC uh, hasn't been able to confirm whether Sheikh Fayez Muhammad is in the country. Letitia Lemke, ABC News.